All right, so we got a GE dryer, and this was a dryer not heating. So I like to start off checking voltage, and what I'm doing here is checking for voltage at the relay, and you're supposed to have 240 volts, and I wasn't getting that. So all of those actually it's one circuit and the circuit was not complete so in other words it's like a loop and that tells me that something is broken there's a wire or a thermostat something is not completing the circuit so I'm gonna go digging I have other videos on how to get inside of a GE. So, pretty straightforward. You do have the two quarter screws on the back. Push the back panel backwards. Then you have two Phillips screws. Remove those. Open the door in the front. Look up, under. And you're gonna have two more Phillips screws. Then you just slide the top back you have two more screws on the top black quarter screws remove those and be careful of your door switch wire you do have to disconnect those and your light switch but some models you'll have a water connection for the steam be careful with that as well to remove that you just press and pull you might need to use an adjustable tool or something that can push against the other end as you pull it to separate it. Also, when you're putting that steam option hose back in, leave it out of the machine so that you don't make the mistake of closing the machine back up with it. So, so moving forward. Those are the screws I was talking about. And then, right there, those are the two Phillips. And then you slide back. There it is, one there, and other on the other end. And that's the connection. Be mindful of that. And leave it out if you can. Tape it outside of the uh, dryer. It is easily missed. And you can actually put the machine back together and totally forget to do it. All right, so door switch sensor, or door switch and sensor, moisture sensor. Press and pull. Make sure you tuck that back in after the repair. And to remove, you just lift and pull. Yes, guys, make sure you clean that out every time you work on your machine. Get that nice and clean. So the belt, you pretty much just push the pulley and release it from the bottom of the motor. So now we're just checking. We already know we have a broken circuit. Just not sure where. And just go around and check your thermostats. You can disconnect a wire from each. You really don't have to sometimes. It can confuse you, so it's best to do it. But I'm going around and checking everything and everything seems to be good so far. We'll get to the issue shortly. Uh. 
Yeah. Found your problem. Did you? Yeah. yeah. What is it? You got a burnt wire. Ah. Yeah. Move it down. Right here. Yeah. yeah. So you've probably been doing either lots of lots of uh, loads back to back. Usually, what caused that wire? You do it. Yeah. yeah. Or it wasn't really tight. Um, it's on there pretty good. So, uh, let's see if we can resplice this. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's all totally burnt. Yeah, totally, uh, totally destroyed. All right, so we have the same wire. In fact, that wire is from another GE. So if you're going to do this repair, you want to make sure you use the same wire. Or if you do have a larger wire, it will not hurt as well. In fact, it's probably better. I've seen a lot of those. They fail right there in that spot. So I like to use can splice it I like to solder it that's what I normally do in this case if it does happen again the wire nut is totally totally sufficient make sure it's nice and tight use a zip tie and zip tie it back to the original uh, part where it's at you'll see I'll be zip tying it make sure it's nice and secure now if something were to happen to that wire where it becomes separated from the terminal, from the element, you want to make sure that it is suspended in midair without touching anything. Um, just in the event. But that's a new wire. Make sure if there's any burnt ends on the terminal, get a, a sandpaper, get it off where it's nice and clean. So... That's pretty much the repair. Same gauge wire. Check all your connections, double check everything. And we're gonna do a quick test now just to verify that we're getting 240 volts at the element and then finally back at the board. So pretty much just follow along and don't forget to plug back in your steam option, which is the tube easily forgotten so here we are now checking the element you'll see it glowing that means we're good time to put it back together and we're golden all right guys uh, pretty straightforward repair thanks for watching don't forget to check my videos in patreon and thanks for the support don't forget to subscribe thank you Okay.
stay inside the house, please.